Welcome to Learn and Go with Dr. Lori. I'm Dr. Lori McCauley from Optimum Pet Vitality. Today we're going to talk about lordosis, the cause, the effects, and the treatments. First, I want to introduce you to Queenie, who's 16 years, give or take a year or two, and she has lordosis. So you see this sway back back here? That's what we're looking at. So first off, what are the causes? First one is weak abdominal muscles. If we look in this picture, we'll see that Queenie has like a pendulous abdomen and she has a smooth curve to her back. This is an earlier picture. This is when just her abdominal muscles were weak. As time went on, she actually had weakness added to her, her rhomboids, her trapezius, her serratus, the muscles that actually hold the body to the limbs. So her body's literally hanging from her shoulder blades. Think about how much stress and soreness that creates up here. The third thing we'll see, and you're not gonna see it here, but you can kind of see it in this picture, is the withers, the pelvis higher than the withers. So if a dog's back end is sore, their knees, their hips, their tarsal joints, and they're straight up on their toes, that's gonna put stress on their back and lead to back pain and can cause lordosis. The last and most prominent cause we see is long nails. You say, why would the nails affect it? It's actually a reflex. If you hear as the dog's walking, that means the nails are hitting the floor. And when the nails hit the floor, it sends a message to the brain. And it tells the brain, hey, we're going uphill. And the brain says, oh, we need to change our posture. Really? Yeah, really. And when the dog changes their posture, it shifts their weight and puts stress on their back and causes that lordosis. Literally just trimming the nails can take a dog with lordosis like this and make it like this. Maybe not perfect, but I've seen a dog, thanks to Judith Shoemaker and Karen Gelman in a postural rehab course, have a dog with really long nails be really lordotic, a pit bull. They trim the nails, that's it. And he was about 30 to 50% better, like that. Cool stuff easy for you to do tomorrow. So what are the effects? You can say, Lori, the dog's not straight, but we're gonna watch the video. This is Queenie walking. So you have back pain, a lot of pressure on it. You have shoulder pain and you have a short stride, all four. And you say, oh, Lori, I, I, I didn't quite see that. It's okay, we're gonna watch her in slow motion. Here's a different video. Now what I want you to know is she does have shoulder pain and so you're gonna see a lameness in her front end. We're gonna go into slow motion. There you go. You can see her collapsing head bob. It's up when she's putting pressure on her bad leg, down when she's putting pressure on her good leg. Look at her going up and down. So you can see she has a lameness. Look at the carpal hyperextension, right? So that's adding to it, as well as the weakness in her chest and abdominal muscles. What you want to see here is that her tail is swinging equally left to right. When she was walking, her pelvis was moving equally left to right, which means it's not a problem in her back end. All right, so what are we going to do to fix it? First goal, decrease pain. Laser, absolutely, we laser her chest or her uh, rhomboids, her trapezius, the thoracolumbar muscles. Now, this isn't Queenie, this is Sid. We're gonna do some chiropractic or manual therapy, get rid of any trigger points. We're gonna use an Assisi loop. This also isn't Queenie, but if your dog is small enough, you can wear it like a hula hoop. And then instead of just treating the size of the loop down, you're treating seven to 10 inches on either side. And a dog Mikey size, that's actually his whole back. Isn't that awesome? Now with Queenie, we do have to lay it on top, but we're treating first one area and then the next area so we can still treat her whole back. The next thing we're gonna do is a cat stretch, not strengthening, but this is gonna take pressure off her back and make her feel better. So we're gonna use Sid and I want you to see he has a nice straight top line. We're gonna deal with pig. Um, I want you when you do this to have your knees bent and your back straight I love the sounds of pigs. You're gonna take your hands, see the nice flat top line, and put them like this. 
so that there's only one finger, a centimeter or less, touching the dog. You're gonna reach up all the way to the front of the sternum and just have that one surface come all the way up. You're gonna open up each facet joint as it goes through. And you saw his, his flexion after the first one. After each time you do this, we do it three to five times, you're gonna get more and more flexion. You're opening up all the facet joints and taking pressure off of those muscles in there. All right, so that's cat stretch. Literally, you can see a dog like this and when you get done, they're better. You're not strengthening, but you're taking away pain and helping their facet joints so then we can set them up to strengthen. Now, with, uh, with Queenie, she was pretty weak. So actually just doing goosing wasn't enough for her. It wasn't working. She was that weak. So what we had to do is get her to flex in a lateral position. Now, if you have a regular dog, say your dog has a nail issue, you can goose either from the flank or from the belly or chest. That's gonna be in another video. This one's long enough. Um, but for a dog like Queenie, we're gonna do a lateral thoracolumbar flexion. We have to pick the front foot up to help them because otherwise they're like, whoa, what do you want me to do? And then you can bring, bring the cookie around. Now the cookie cannot be right next to the chest, right? We can't touch our chest, they can't either. So think about a circle going from their nose to their back toes. All right, I'm Lori McCauley with Optimum Pet Vitality. I hope you learned something, I hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time.